Hey, how's it going? We are in Revelation chapter 16. We're going to read the chapter 1 through 21, the seven bowls of God's wrath. Here we go. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the land, and ugly and painful sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, You are just in these judgments. You who are and who were the Holy One, because you have so judged. For they have shed the blood of your saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And I heard the altar respond, Yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. They were seared by the intense heat, and they cursed the name of God, who had control over these plagues, but they refused to repent and glorify Him. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. Men gnawed their tongues in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, but they refused to repent of what they had done. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are spirits of demons performing miraculous signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world and gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with him, so that he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed. Then they gathered the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since man has been on the earth. So tremendous was the quake. The great city split into three parts, and the city of the, uh, the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away, and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones of about a hundred pounds each fell upon men, and they cursed God on account of the plague of hail, because the plague was so terrible. All right, there you go. (laughs) So, we've got these seven bowls of God's wrath. I don't know if these seven bowls of wrath are the same or there's an analogy with the seven trumpets of the seventh seal. There's a lot of sevens going on here. Uh, And, you know, just recently I was thinking about Jericho and how the nations of Israel, the armies of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days once, but then the seventh day they did seven times. And that's kind of like the seven seals with the seventh seal being the seven trumpets. And here's the seven bowls of God's wrath. These are the last ones according to the verse chapter 15 that from last time. So we've got the sores, we've got the blood of the sea, the blood in the uh, water, you know, like the, the rivers and stuff. And then you got the scorching sun and darkness and Armageddon, the great battle. And uh, you got this earthquake with the last one, lots of wrath. And I think it's important not to see this as random destruction or just like a lunatic going bonkers, you know, like somebody might just start smashing stuff, you know, uh, and we don't want to see it that way. Uh, If you read verses 5 through 7, then I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, you are just in these judgments, you who are and who were the Holy One because you have so judged, you know, and it, it just talks about how these are just, 
Verse 7, yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. So, you know, if you've ever been significantly wronged and you've wanted someone to defend you, uh, you know, then somebody did defend you, that's what this is. This is finally justice coming for the evil that has happened. And so if you just see it as like, well, everything's fine, everybody's happy, everybody's minding the, their own business, and then wrath and destruction, it's just going to seem like, wow, that is completely inappropriate. But, you know, just like in wartime, some things make sense in war that don't make sense in just regular life. This is this should be viewed in that way. Um, not random destruction, but the wrath of God that is deserved and you know, God figures all that stuff out. Um, I used to be kind of concerned about reading stuff like this. It's, I mean, I'm still kind of concerned. I used to be greatly concerned about reading stuff like this and just be like, ah! Um, but then, I, you know, I realized that if God is just and benevolent, then He's not going to do it wrong. You know, like, that would, like when I would read these years ago, I'd be like, ah, this doesn't seem right. Um, but then I thought, well, God doesn't do stuff that's wrong, so whatever it is that's going to happen is going to be right. So I can rest in that. So that, that helped me a lot. Um, the other point I want to make here before we pray is, if you've ever wondered why Jesus had to die on the cross to satisfy the wrath of God, that, that you know, well, just read this part of Revelation. You know, like, it'll really show you, okay, yeah, it wasn't just like, yeah, you know what, let's just call her good and forgive the sins of the world. They had to be paid for. Jesus paid this price for the wrath of God by the scourging, you know, the trial, the carrying the cross, being crucified. He paid the price. He paid the penalty, and it's sufficient for us. The wrath of God is satisfied through Christ on the cross. So let's trust, trust in Jesus so that we can have peace on the day of the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, we thank you that you make a way for us to not be afraid of your wrath or being on the wrong side of this deal, but you have made the way of redemption through Christ and what Jesus did on the cross. And so, Father, we thank you for the way of redemption. And Lord, we pledge our hearts to you. Guide us into your goodness and your grace and your mercy so that we can avoid, um, we can avoid destruction and wrath. Lord, help us to see your love and your goodness and to walk away from the darkness. So, Lord, guide us in all these things. Help us to know that your, uh, your decisions are just and right. And help us to just put our faith in you. So, Lord, guide us through all this stuff. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.